welcome or welcome back. My name is Eden Isora and this is the ASMR podcast. Today we are just hanging out in our cozy t-shirt, Spongebob of course, Spongebob, and we have little Lexi here and little Jill Jill and I don't know, the vibes are very good today I woke up feeling really good and I had a dream where my dog said something I was at the beach in my dream with somebody and we were talking and then I asked a question and the answer was her and I think she said me or it's mine or something like she ref- she spoke back to answer me and I got really scared and ran away into the ocean that was cool. So when I woke up, I told her about it. Um, usually, I call her good girl Lexi. Um, just randomly, I'll, you know, be like, there's the good girl Lexi, and stuff like that. But today, Oh. The girl you're seeing back there <laughs> That's bad girl Lexi She thinks she's in trouble but she's not Not anymore anyways So yeah Aww Oh I thought she was coming here But What Well, she knows where she's allowed to go in the yard. You're a good girl. She knows where she's allowed to go. And today she crossed a boundary. And when I told her not to, she kept going. That's right. That's right. So... You know, of course I had to use like a stern voice to reprimand her But it's very hard because she is the cutest And I just wanted to pick her up and hug her and give her kisses But I had to use a stern voice for at least a minute So she would know not to do that But We don't often see bad girl Lexi (laughs) So when we do, it's kind of, I don't know, it mixes it up Mixes it up Um, something that I was doing today was I was spinning in circles underneath the ceiling fan Like I stood directly under it in the middle and I spun with like my arms out in the opposite direction of the ceiling fan so the ceiling fan was spinning one way I was spinning the other way and staring directly up at it and it was a very magical experience Um, I just, I don't know, try that out, especially if you are somebody who disassociates or you feel disconnected from your body. I find that spinning in circles helps you bring you back into your body because it's 
there's like that push and pull going on and so it kind of pulls you back into where you are but yeah I really like that I think that it's so fun and it also feels a little bit trippy um, another thought that I have here in my notes was something that I thought about the other day when I was out in nature I thought that it must feel so nice for a tree to have those vines growing up it like if you just imagine what that would feel like it probably feels like ASMR you know you just you're there, you're strong, you're a tree and then you have like these vines kind of going up and they're so tight on your tree body and they're like all around and it's tight but gentle so it kind of gives you like goosebumps you know, I was just thinking about that um also Another thing that's tree related was I have some different tactics, right? For if you ever feel afraid because for me that's something that I experience sometimes I have, you know, fear that I have to work through and sometimes that happens late at night when I'm laying in bed, I just imagine something scary and I have a hard time feeling safe and falling asleep and I like to do a couple of things one, I imagine that my house is a tree kind of like in Winnie the Pooh his house, you know, it's in the base of a tree and I don't know, it's you can easily imagine that just look around your room and imagine that above your room and around the house it's this giant tree that just goes up and then there's the branches and Imagining that you are in a tree, I don't know, it just makes me feel so cozy and safe. So, 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, another tactic that I like to use is if I don't feel safe laying in bed in my house, I imagine myself laying outside like as if, you know, I just had nowhere to go and I was outside it's night time, I need to sleep and, you know, I find a spot and just curl up outside and in a way it kind of sounds not scary, you know of course there are dangers, but you know, I feel like I could handle it if it was that extreme and so I imagine that for a little bit and then I imagine well, what if I had a tent? and I notice how much safer I would feel still outside but now I have a little place that I'm in and then I realize I have a house. I'm in a house, which, you know, when you compare that perspective of laying on the ground outside and how that's not that bad for fear, then you imagine, oh my gosh, now there's these walls and these doors that have locks on them and a ceiling and a bed and a blanket and pillows and you just realize 
like how good it is. So that's a fun game that I like to play, which, yeah, it just involves switching perspectives until you come back around to, to yours, but with a fresh new view of it. Um, so, yeah, if you are ever feeling that way, maybe try that out. Um, yeah, another thing I was thinking about was transmuting energy. Because, you know, I did a video about transmuting sexual energy a few weeks ago. And I recently had a lot of energy that I needed to funnel into something, but it is easier, easier said than done because I felt so, like, I don't know, I felt like I couldn't harness that energy and direct it where it needed to go. So... I think it's so important to have those structures set up beforehand, before you need them, because sometimes when you have a lot of energy coming in, it almost overpowers your system, so you can't really make a structure in that moment. At least for me, I feel too, like, electric, and I can't sit down and make a plan. So, it's good to have a plan when you're calm, you know, make a plan, and then when you do have that influx, that surge of energy that rushes in, you can just go ahead and you know, pull out your notebook and look at the plan and just dive in without having to think too much. Because when you have to think, that's when the energy can be used for overthinking and that's not good, at least for me. So yeah, it was an interesting experience learning that and seeing that sometimes, you know, you can understand something conceptually, but then it, it can be hard to put it into action. Um, I can't remember if I've told you this yet, but there is this thing that I saw online. It was somebody talking about how instead of trying to be your best self because, you know, everybody's doing self-development and wanting to get better in every area of their life. So, instead of trying to be your best self, be your favorite self. And that really resonated with me a lot because I think it really just brings you back to purpose, you know? And the purpose of life is to be more of yourself, to do the things that light you up and make you excited to be alive. And so, if you're striving to just be perfect or be the version of yourself that society considers to be the best, that might lead you on a path that you don't actually want to be on. So, I think it's good to strive for, you know, just being more of what you like instead of being perfect or just striving for perfection. Um, yeah, I don't know. It is hard because sometimes I feel excited to record for the, the podcast or YouTube or whatever, 
but when I actually start recording, I just, I don't know, it feels like difficult, hard to push through, um, and I guess that's part of it, you know? Sometimes you just have to keep going even though in the moment it kind of feels a little, there's a little bit of resistance. Um, also, it's hard because, you know, I want to continue putting myself out there, but some days it feels like a lot, you know, to have people giving me their opinions on my life and the things that I choose to share. Um, like, you know, sometimes because I do share a lot, sometimes people think that they know everything about me and try to tell me what I should or shouldn't do and tell me what they think I'm wrong about or what my blind spots are and that's kind of fun sometimes because it's like, oh, you're thinking about me that much that you're, you know, coming up with this whole theory. Like, thank you. But also, sometimes it irritates me because you're never going to have the whole story. There's always parts that are left out, not intentionally, but because I can't possibly think of every single detail, every single angle, I can't preemptively answer every assumption. And so it's like, if you just get the bits of information you've been given and then create this narrative, um, and you think you have, like, this, um, manifesto for me that will change my life, um, you're wrong, like, you don't know me, you don't, you don't, you know some of me, and that's great, but you don't have the answer, like Kanye West said in that interview, that's like a famous viral clip where he's like, you don't got the answers, just imagine that I'm saying that to you right now. So, before you subscribe to my OF and send me a paragraph about how you think that I should be and whatever, um, just go watch that clip of you don't got the answers. That's the point. None of us have the answers. Nobody has the ultimate truth. We all are living in pursuit of understanding more about ourselves and others, and I take it as a compliment if you do want to, you know, figure me out, but just know that mm, you never will, <laughs> you know, because there's always something that you don't know, so give it up. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna continue, you know, sharing parts of myself, and this is part of it, and that's kind of one of the things that you have to accept if you want to be vulnerable, is that people will try to be a mentor to you when you didn't ask for it, you know, um, I am my own mentor, and I think mm, some people might think that that's egotistical, but like, I don't want to follow anyone, I don't want to listen to some random old person's advice, I'm gonna follow my own guides, my own intuition, um, I am my own god, 
but of course I love I love learning from everybody but I'm not gonna just you know if you write me a whole paragraph I'm not gonna read it and suddenly I have been enlightened and you're right about everything I'm wrong about everything and it's amazing like that's not how it works you know and um I think that goes for everybody, like, you are the only one that knows you, and no matter how much you try, other people aren't going to fully get it, and so you have to be careful taking other people's advice. You have to know yourself enough to know how to translate what people are telling you, and throw out what you don't need, like what's not applicable to you. Um, And I think I've gotten very good at that. I'm still open. I don't get me wrong. I still, I get information from a lot of places, a lot of people. Um, And sometimes it can be from the most surprising of sources. But there is no one person that I fully follow and trust other than myself. So, I don't know. Um, That was just something that I woke up to this morning that I thought was interesting. Just a message telling me a bunch of assumptions about me. So, again, flattering because it's like, damn, bro, you really put some effort into this. (laughs) But also annoying because it's, you know, presumptuous. Like, you don't know me, bro. Like, what are you doing? But anyways, um, yeah. So, part of the process and... Um, maybe I will do another Q&A video soon, because that way we can clear up some assumptions instead of, you know, building conspiracy theories and whatever, whatever. So, yeah, let me know if you have any questions for me, like fun questions, serious questions, anything, and we can go from there. Um... Oh yeah, so another thing that I recently went through was I was having all of this anxiety about losing things and people and animals that I care about and it just, it came up out of nowhere and I felt this overwhelming anxiety running through me for days, you know, I just kept imagining losing everything, you know, like, especially her, like, I was really, for no reason, just thinking about that and how I can't handle that and whatever, um, I won't be able to handle it, and it kind of allowed me to learn this lesson about letting yourself love even though loss is inevitable and part of the cycle which is so hard because you know your anxiety makes you want to go it makes you want to shut it off you know because having an open heart and letting yourself love while you still know that you will pretty much definitely lose the thing you love, um, it can be very painful. And I think for me, it's because I'm a future-oriented person, and so I always am seeing the future, and so it's hard for me to live in the present and 
enjoy things while they're here because all I can see is the, you know, inevitable ending off in the distance. It's like overlaid. It's overlaid over the present moment. And as soon as I start to feel this love and joy in the moment, I just see the end overlaid and it makes me feel sick and it makes me want to detach prematurely. Um, it makes me want to shut it off and not care at all in the moment so that I can protect myself from the inevitable tragedy but you know that obviously is not the answer the answer is to let yourself feel everything feel the suffering feel the love feel the loss feel the grief feel everything everything has its time and you know it's it's really hard because it's like I also kind of grieve before I've ever lost anything because I know I'm gonna lose it so I start the grieving process early and that intervenes with enjoying the present so um, I feel like I'm out of that lesson right now but you know the lessons always come back around at a different level, so I don't know something that I've been thinking about, but yeah, I guess today will be a shorter shorter episode because I don't know, that's just what I'm feeling so I hope you're having a really good day and I will talk to you soon bye